Hi, here I have an isolated DC-DC converter. I want to open it and show you it's inside the structure. This one is already broken. It's got a short circuit on the input side. I will first remove the plastic cover and we'll see whether I can cut the epoxy. If that is not possible, I will dip it inside acetone for one day or two days. And after that, I will remove the epoxy. And we will see the inside the structure. Okay, so plastic cover is removed. It seems that this epoxy is very soft. So it just... It's a rubber. It's more or less a rubber. Don't want to damage it as much as possible. So it must be very gentle. Maybe not a good idea to do it with a knife. Okay, so after removing the rubber, this is what we are left with. We have a toroidal transformer. This is the primary side, this is the secondary side. On the primary side, we have four windings, and also on the secondary side, we have uh, four windings. You can see that the primary windings and secondary windings, they are separated with a little bit of gap. And of course, everything is under a certain sort of rubber. So this gap together with that rubber creates the isolation between primary and secondary. Now these windings are on top of this ferrite core, but the ferrite core has special feature. So if you have a ferrite core like this, this ceramic material, they have a certain level of conductivity. So if you put a winding on top of them, then if you have a large voltage difference between primary and secondary, a discharge will happen to the ferrite core and will come back from the other side. So the converter will burn. So this one actually it is a ferrite core that is covered completely with a layer of insulation. Of course, there is a hole inside it. So the winding is actually placed on top of this insulation. So there is no access for the winding to directly discharge to the ferrite. And therefore, internally, we will not have a discharge and breakdown of the converter. So depending on the voltage level, the primary and secondary voltage, the number of uh, windings on primary side and secondary side, the turn ratio will be different. For example, this one is 12 to 20 and this one is 5 to 20. So it has more secondary windings. Okay, this one also has an air ring as you can see here. <laughs> this one is actually a little bit of ferrite bead. Um, on some of the windings, I assume to damp some oscillation or to remove interference something like that so the other side we have this is the primary circuitry this is the secondary circuitry two transistor capacitor capacitor resistor resistors so this one is a self oscillating circuitry with two transistor it creates a self oscillation so the primary side will be excited and on the secondary side we have more turns so the voltage can be boosted and also we have some other windings uh, to create the other voltage level. So we create minus 5 volts here and 20 volts here. These two diodes basically rectify and create minus 5 volts. These two diodes rectify and create plus 20 volts. These are the output capacitor, these are discharging resistors, and this is a diode with a resistor in series connected to the output of 20 volts. So I'm going to show you the circuitry of this little piece 
Okay, so here is the primary side circuitry. This is a self-oscillating circuitry with two transistors. Here we have the main windings, which are connected to the collector of these transistors, and we have two feedback windings, which are connected to the base of these transistors. Now the feedback windings get their power from this resistor, um, and across this resistor here, we also have a 0.27 microfarad capacitance. This one is here. Even without this capacitor, the circuit works, but then you have to adjust the value of this resistor. In a separate video, I will show you the functionality of different type of self-oscillating circuitry with one transistor, NPN or PNP, and also with two transistors, NPN or PNP. Okay, so this is all for the primary side, the winding and the self-oscillating circuitry. Now I will show you the secondary side. So this is the circuitry for the secondary side. As I said, on the secondary side of this uh, transformer, we have also four windings. So two of them, together with these two diodes, they are used to create plus 20 volts. And two other windings, together with these two diodes, are used to create minus 5 volts. These are the output capacitances, 10 microfarad each. And these two tiny resistors are the discharging resistors which I measured them to be 680 ohm. Now also across the 20 volt terminals, we have a diode and a resistor here, probably to clamp the voltage if it exceeds a certain level. I don't know whether this is a Zener diode or is a normal diode, but basically we have this branch. Okay, so this is all. Um, now you know exactly what is inside an isolated DC-DC converter. See you next time. Bye.